everything that you've been. See you. 
turning lights around. I worship you. Would you bend to me? I worship you. You are held, and you're mending broken hearts. Thank you, Jesus.
the sick folk that need to hear a word from the Lord, that need some love given to them from the hearts of those that have a love for God. They'll never get it. And how good are we going to be as far as being effective if we can't even affect our own or impact our own backyard? Amen. So these are things that we're going to be gradually getting into and having a good time doing it. Amen. 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 Again, Mother had said Wednesday night we had an awesome time. Um, if you weren't here, we had an awesome time. <laughs> if you weren't here, we had an awesome time. And so now we are officially in a place to be able to start the restructure, the rebuild, the, the moving forward and doing the things that are necessary. And I think this message today is one of those things where we're going to continue in Nehemiah because as we were speaking last week and all of the prayers that we were doing, we were in Nehemiah 1. Well, today we're going to move over to Nehemiah 4 because I want to share something with you there. Amen. I want to share something with you there. And, uh, and I was blessed this week. I was blessed Friday. I was able to spend the whole day with Brother Mike. Brother Mike and I. Brother Mike and I and, and two of my sons, we uh, got on a boat, went out to Catalina. We fished and didn't catch nothing all day long. Just all day. Didn't catch nothing all day. And I'm, I'm talking about all day. If y'all know how long all day is, we got on the boat at 7 o'clock and at 3.30 o'clock, we still ain't had nothing in our bag. It's all day. But how many of us know that when God is ready for you to catch, you'll catch. Right before it's time to go home, we didn't catch a whole lot, but we didn't get off the boat with nothing. Praise God. Amen. So, Josh, uh, we was talking about you on the boat. And we said our next trip, you going. If we got to kidnap you from work, you going. Because uh, we just liked the camaraderie out there. It was a good boat. We had a really good time. Amen. Meet me over in Nehemiah. I'm not going to hold you long, but I do believe that this is a part of the finish setting up portion. Two voices. Uh, true worship. I'm about to call y'all a choir. True worship. Thank y'all for rolling with your pastor early this morning. I know y'all. Y'all and y'all preparing and y'all have busy schedules, but I thank you for responding when I called and asked you to come and help. And I you know Cedar Grove is grateful for your help. Travell had a meeting. Travell. What's up, man? You alright? Alright. Hey Rob, how you doing? All right, all right, 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 amen. Uh, let, let's, let's dig into the word. Is that all right? Amen. Bible Ford coming and, and deaconizing and stuff right here. Ain't that all right? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Meet me over in Nehemiah chapter 4. Amen. I see some I see some notepads and some pen. That's what I'm talking about. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let's write some stuff down. Nehemiah chapter 4. We're going to look at verse number one first. That's where we're going to start. And the word says, But it so happened when Sam Ballot heard that we were rebuilding the wall, that he was furious and very indignant and mocked the Jews. Verse number two said, And he spoke before his brethren and the army of Samaria and said, What are these feebles? What are these feeble Jews doing? Will they fortify themselves? Will they offer sacrifices? Will they complete it in a day? Will they revive the stones from the heap of rubbish? Stones that are burned. Verse 3 says, Now Tobiah, the Amorite, Ammonite, was beside him, and he said, Whatever they build, if even a fox goes up on it, he will break down their stone wall. Verse 4 says, Hear, O God, hear, O our God, for we are despised. Turn their reproach on their own heads and give them a plunder 
to a land of captivity. Go to verse 7. Verse 7 says, Now it happened when Sanballat, Tobiah, and the Arabs, and the Ammonites, and the Ashtonites heard that the walls of Jerusalem was being restored, and the gaps, somebody say gaps, yes. were beginning to be closed, that they became very angry, and all of them conspired together to come and attack Jerusalem and create confusion. Verse number nine says, nevertheless, we made our prayers to our God, and because of them, we set watch against them day and night. For a few minutes, if I could just use for a subject to encourage us today, I want you to use this. Don't stop working. Yeah, Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. whatsoever you do, whatsoever you do. Don't, stop don't stop working. Amen. Amen. Father, I thank you now for this time to share your word. Remove me from self, all of you, none of me. Speak clearly, Father, that we may hear, that it may penetrate our spirit and our minds, cause us to stay in line with what your will is, but even more so, God, to continue working in spite of what it looks like. And we thank you now, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 If we look at this, and remember we were reading um, the first chapter, and in the first chapter of our reading, we, we remember that Nehemiah, um, he was someone that was burdened with the, with the assignment, more or less, of going back and helping the children of Israel first realign themselves and then get themselves in a position to where they can rebuild and refortify their city. Mm. Amen. Have I got a witness? And what happens is this. There are things in life that will cause us, as we were reading in chapter 1, that will cause us to get out of line with what God's will is. It will cause us to drift away from where our first love is. Come on up in here, somebody. There are things in life that will entice us so to the place to where we will miss the mark simply because uh, sin feels good. Amen. Sin is fun. Have I got a witness? Sin, sin is something that is easy to do without having a bunch of responsibility that's attached to it. Have I got a witness? Sin is something that you can do effortless, effortlessly. I, have I got a witness? Matter of fact, sin can do something, something that you can do without even having to think hard about it. Uh -huh. Sin, 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 sin. So as we know, the children of Israel, they began to sin because they wanted to be like somebody else. Because they wanted to have what other folks had. They, because they felt as if they, they were just as worthy as somebody else to have these things, even though they knew for a fact that it was not God's will for them. But rather, they said, if we want to be like everybody, then we need to have what everybody else has. But I come by here this morning to tell you, you don't need what they got to get what God got for you. If you can just stay focused on what God has and stay in a position, it's all right to be different. Because when you are different, you're in position to make a difference. But if everybody looked the same, when somebody comes to see the lights of Jesus shine, you won't see the light because everybody else is dark. If you want to be like everybody else, then you go ahead and follow everybody else. So we found that as Nehemiah began to encourage them, he prayed before he even began to talk with them. Have I got a witness? So, so, so therefore, before we even came together on Wednesday for prayer, I had already prayed to God to ask God, what would you have me to say to your people so that they can understand that we have to get back to our first love yes. in order for us to have the mind to even build because we know that distraction is coming. We know attacks are coming. We know people talk. And if we can't hold our peace, yes. Yes. the Lord will never fight our battle and we'll stay in a place of defeat if we do not allow for our mind to be stayed on him yes. that is able to keep us from falling. Yes. Oh, I wish I had somebody that wanted to pray with me in here. So now we find when we get over into chapter 4, now we find Nehemiah had already did some encouraging. 
He had already said what he had to say. The word of God had already come through the priest and the prophet. Got them back in position. They were weeping. Are you, are you with me? And in the middle of their weeping, he told them, don't weep. He said, because the joy of the Lord is your strength. And once he got them to where he needed them, and now they are building. When we get into chapter number four, what we find out is this. You ain't going to build in the middle of God's will without opposition. Amen. The, the, the enemy going to send somebody your way because he wants to discourage you from doing what God said for you to do. Because he understands that if you ever get to where God wants you to be, that you will be the biggest threat to his kingdom there is. So I'd rather discourage you before you realize that you are more than a conqueror. Yeah. Is that all right? Can I say that? Yeah. Can, can I say that? <laughs> Just give me a high five and say, yeah, man, praise <laughs> hey, Amen. Listen, so, so they got to the place. Listen, they got to the place where they were building, but they couldn't get to the place of building until they got to the place of releasing the point of the sin that they were in till they released that and got to the place where they were ready to be used by God again. Yeah. Then they had the mind to begin to work. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I need you to know sin will keep you too heavy. Yeah. And the heavier you are, the less you're able to hear from God, the less you're able to be willing to work for God, the less desire you will have to wait patiently upon the Lord. Simply because when all hell breaks loose, you're at a place where you like, look, if I ain't a part of the hell, then what the hell is going on? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I ain't in trouble for saying that. <laughs> my, my right, mom? All right. All right. Amen. All right. So when we get down in chapter number four, listen, it said, now you're, you're, you're talking about two, two people, some, 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 some commanders that's over a whole bunch of people that was responsible for tearing down the city in the first place. Yeah. And look, look at this. When the enemy can catch you in a vulnerable state, because of your willingness to fall subject to sin, he thinks that he's got you because you took your eye off of where your strength was. Yeah. And because he found a loophole to come and tear you down, he thinks that because you're down, that you're out. But I come by to tell you that when God has Nehemiah connected to your life, you may be down, but he'll send the word through his prophet or his priest to get you to the place to where you can understand that God is still with you in spite of what you did. He's still with you and able to take you from where you were to where you're going. So here we find that Sam Ballard and them, first off, they figured. Jan, we told this book of God. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Right, I believe in that. When they told it down, mother, they were having a party talking about the roof is on fire. All right, all right. All right. <laughs> the roof. Yeah. The roof is on fire. Yeah. They, they tore it down and they felt good about it. But it got to the place that they didn't understand that when God sends a mandate, through his men and women of God, that when he does it according to how God instructed for it to happen, it don't matter who you are, you still ain't bigger than God. And when God sent Nehemiah, he sent Nehemiah and he said, pray first. And after you pray, then go forth. Then after you go forth, stay focused. And after you stay focused, stay willing. And after you stay willing, remember to keep praying. And after you keep praying, make sure you keep believing. And after you keep believing, make sure you keep having faith. I want somebody to catch this. And in the middle of your praying and having faith, I need you to understand that the devil will come your way. But I need you to know that your prayer, your praise, your faith, your belief will shake him up and make him stand back and think twice before he come back again. Oh, I feel like preaching a little bit in here. Can I preach a little bit? So we find that now Sam Allen and them, the Bible says in verse number one, that when they heard, they hadn't even came up on the scene yet, Pop. They heard that you were, that the wall was being rebuilt. The thing that got me with that is this. Who told them? Because if y'all tore it down, ain't nobody in the vicinity because you know your work has already been done. So when Nehemiah came and began to pray and the children of Israel came back and they got what they needed after they got encouraged and they started building, who told them? Yes. But I need you to know when the Spirit of God want the word out, the Spirit of
of God and get the word out. And when they found out, they was upset. They was mad. I, I, I believe if they were down here and had long nails and analyzed it, they'd have put their hands on their hip and said, I know they did it. Come up in here. Come on here, somebody. Try to rebuild something that we told them. Who in the world do they believe that they are? I need you to know I'm a child of the Most High God. I've got control over what I've got control over because if God says go, I don't care what you did. I don't care who was with you. I don't care how many of y'all it was. If God said rebuild, Booker, I'm going to start. So he was upset. Uh -huh. And the Bible says he began to mock them. Because yeah. <laughs> remember, they was caught up in captivity for 70 something years. Yeah. And they sit up talking about, how you gonna be locked up? Uh -huh. <laughs> Listen, it's a, how you gonna be in jail since 1965 uh -huh. and you get out in, 19, in, in 2005 and you still got them old platform shoes on with the fish tanks, <laughs> bell bottoms on. And you coming out here when they wearing skinny jeans <laughs> and you think you get ready to come and do something. Well, I need you to know skinny jeans and all. I may look like something on the outside, but my insides is where it needs to be. Bell bottom, skinny jeans, no matter what it is, on the inside, I'm still representing. So they begin to mock them. But mockery was just a, 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 a ploy to discourage them. Amen. But I need you to know this. If Nehemiah hadn't been there to continue to encourage, yes, I believe the children of Israel could have been discouraged. Yes. But when you have a leader that's sold out for God, yes. that no matter what it looks like on the outside, he understands who he's connected to. And he knows that the power that's from on high is stronger than any power that's around them. And every once in a while, all you got to do is just say, look here. You don't have to tell them what you're doing, but let them see what you're doing. If, the, if all hell is breaking loose and you see me over here on my knees, I ain't got to tell you that I'm praying for you to know that I'm praying. And when you begin to see God move and bring peace, you will understand it's not because I was talking a good game, but it was because I was displaying a good game. I was giving it to the Lord instead of giving you some advice that wasn't going to work. I don't ask God what I need to do before we do it because the enemy needs to know I ain't scared of you. Back up and leave us. So the Bible says, and he spoke before his brethren in the army of Samaria, and he said, what are these people Jews doing? I was feeble when I left. But now I'm favorable when I'm back. I left here out of line. But I came back in line. I left here messed up. But I came back fixed up. I left here confused. But I came back focused. I left here weak. But I'm back here strong. I really didn't have much faith when I left. But my mustard seed right now has got me to the place. Well, if I can't figure it out, I got a Nehemiah in front of me. And as long as he's following Jesus, I will follow his lead. Because at the end of the day, we all in this thing together. And we're only going to be as strong. I'm sorry, I'm getting excited. <laughs> Lord, I ain't supposed to be excited this soon. <laughs> but when you can see what God is doing, yeah, yeah. you get excited because you're trying to get to the end and skip everything in the middle. But I need you to know that we got to go through the process in the middle in order for us to appreciate the end at the end. And for the enemy to see that we can hold our peace. We can be steadfast and unmovable. We can follow God. We ain't got to do no shortcutting because God has already got the path made out for us. And all we got to do is stick to it. So listen. So listen. They start teasing them and asking questions. First off, they're going to call us feeble. Mm. Second off, they're going to ask, are they fortifying themselves? Mm. Do y'all know who we pray to? Hallelujah. <laughs> Why not? I was fortifying me before. That's the reason why I was caught up where I was for as long as I was. Yeah, yeah. But if I stick to who it is that I know, yeah. I ain't got to fortify me, my quad. Yeah. All I have to do is faithful to be fortified. Yeah. So they 
Are they going to fortify themselves? Will they offer sacrifices? Mm. You know what this told me? Y'all know what I was supposed to be doing uh -huh. all along. Amen. You know that I'm a chosen person. Yes. You know God had his hands on me. Right. And you know what my lifestyle was yes. before I slipped away and did something different. Yes. So you knew that I was one that sacrificed yes. because that was something that we did. Yes. You knew that we were somebody that prayed and fasted because that's what we did. And now you got the nerve to come and question what was going on. They wasn't questioning it. What they was doing was trying to wrap their mind around what's going to happen if they get back to doing that again. If God be for us. And I know that when I got God first, whew, everything else must fall subject to the power of him who sent me. And so we find now they ask the question, will they retrieve stones from the heaps of rubbish, stones that were burned? In other words, we're going to tear this bullet down, right. so down, right. to the downness of the down, so that they can't pick it up even if they even wasn't that. They can't pick this back up. The rubble is so rubberish. The, 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 the stones are so burnt up. Everything is unusable. Yes. All right, all right. Let me tell you something. I don't care what appears to be unusable. If God can use a donkey to speak to a prophet, he can use some burnt up boots or burnt up stones to rebuild the wall. Yes, yes, yes. So they ask those questions. And verse 3 says, Now Tobiah the Ammonite was beside him and said, Whatever they build, this is where I want y'all to catch this, if even a fox goes up on it, he will break down their stones. Yeah. That, that's what he said in verse number 3. But listen, in verse number 4, I'm going to come back to that, but I want you to hear. In verse number 4, he says, I remember this is Nehemiah saying, Hear, O our God, for we are despised, turn their reproach on their own heads, and give them as plunder to a land of captivity. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So what Nehemiah did was this. I hear them, Lord, but I trust you. I see what they're trying, God, but I need a word from you. Listen, I won't move until you give me the direction. And the reason for that is this. Because if I move, when you say move, just like that. What will begin to happen is you will allow the order that has been established to now be activated and go in my favor instead of me falling subject to their mouth. Are you listening? Because listen to me. When the Bible says that life and death is in the power of the tongue, people can speak stuff into the atmosphere and make you believe it and then you fall subject to the power of their tongue. But when you can believe who God is because you put him first, then it doesn't matter how powerful their tongue is. It's not more powerful than your steadfastness and your belief in God. So when we look at them talking about the foxes breaking down the wall, and then you go down into verse number seven when it talks about the gaps being closed. What they were referring to was this. This version says gaps, but there are other versions that call the gaps breaches. And if you understand what a breach is, a breach is a hole in the wall that allows for someone on the outside to look in. A breach is also a weak spot that anything around it has been compromised so if anything too heavy gets in that area, everything around it is too weak to hold the support of what's on it. So therefore, they begin to speak and they say, well, I see these holes and gaps in the wall. So if even a little fox, and y'all know how little a fox is, even if a little fox ran on the top of the wall, it would crumble. What they were trying to do was this. Y'all doing this for nothing. <laughs> see the girl? Somebody out there saying, I don't know what y'all praying for. Y'all doing that for nothing. I don't know what y'all bringing the pastor up in there for. Y'all doing that for nothing. I 
don't know why y'all making plans for anniversaries and all of this. Y'all doing it for nothing. Do you see how many holes you got in the wall? You're doing it for nothing. And when the enemy see holes in the wall, the reason why they got so upset was simply because a hole in the wall would allow for the enemy to peek through, to build up a defense to your offense because they know everything you're doing behind the wall. So if I can make my plan on this side of the wall, on how I'm going to get you on that side of the wall, it's easy for me to do because I know when you wake up, I know when you go to sleep, I know when you eat, I know when you go to the bathroom, I know when you're talking to each other, I know when you're happy, I know when you're sad, I know what goes on. Cause Nehemiah said, 
took Nehemiah to continue to encourage because it's easy for the folk that haven't been consistent lately to stay encouraged on their own. So every once in a while, Nehemiah would have to say, Lord, I need you Oh, my God. 
if you put it in the hands of the Lord. What am I trying to say? Put your faith in the hands of the Lord. Put your praise in the hands of the Lord. Put your hands in the hands of the Lord. And build when the sun comes up. And build when the sun goes down. Just be Trust God yeah. if they didn't see him trusting him. Yeah. And then 
they was ever, they was able to see the evidence because if you finish reading in this chapter you will find out that here it was they were preparing and because he continued to pray all through the process that God answered his prayer he, he, he was they were saying that here it was the people were discouraged are you listening but he continued to pray and it got to the place to where it said they appointed some people to be watchmen. Yeah. Because I need you to know something. We're not going to work and not have nobody watch out for the devil. Because while we're busy, he figures that we done took our eyes off of the potential of him creeping in. So we're going to have a few watchmen. And watch this. I want y'all to know, I just want Cedar to work. I got some watchmen that want to help us. They ain't got to be members. But they members of the same body. So they gonna watch and pray while we working. Are you listening? And, and it, it turned around and said what happened was the ploy of Sam Bound and Tobiah got shut down because of the consistency of prayer and the consistency of the willingness of the workers. Because it goes on to say they continue to work. And they continue to work. They felt a little more relief when they know I'm working. I got somebody else watching. Right. Because at the end of the day, guess what happens? If I'm working and somebody come up on the back of me, the ultimate, the element of surprise, then not only does it shock me, but it also stops the work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But Bequan, if I know, if I know, matter of fact, every time you praise things, you let it all out. Yes. Because there's watchmen on the wall. Everybody ain't in the same place where you are dancing, but everybody on the same wall. And so everybody is praying that there ain't no breach, nowhere, so that your praise won't be affected because it's people that need to be impacted by the power that God possessed in you. See the growth God has possessed the power in here that has yet to be unleashed. And all we got to do is work and let the watchmen Watch. Yes. Let the watchman pray. Yes. Nehemiah, your Nehemiah is praying. Yes. Your Nehemiah is staying in constant communication with God. Yes. And as he gives me the order, I'm going to give it to you. Yes. And we're going to keep on going. Yes. And before it's all said and done, we're going to look around. Yes. And we're going to say, look at that wall. Yes. Yes. Because he said within a short period of time, they looked up and the wall that had went down to absolutely nothing was already more than halfway built. With no holes to breaches. You know why? Because we didn't rush to get it done. But at the same time, we wasn't slowful about getting it done either. Are you listening? And we didn't do it with a spirit of grudge. But we did it with a spirit of expectancy and a spirit of joy. Are you listening? What does building look like? Let's get into Bible study. What does building look like? Let's get in this community. Yeah. What does building look like? Let's encourage one another and people outside of here. Yeah. What does building look like? Study at home while you're by yourself. Yeah. What does building look like? Huh? Building looks like the fruits of the spirit. Yeah. And we make sure that we're operating in all the fruits. Mm. And watch the wall go back up. Right. Are you with me? Yeah. Are you with me? If you're with me, somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Make the devil mad. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, let him know. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Father, thank you. Thank you, oh God. Thank you, oh God. Seal this word in our hearts and our spirit. Keep us motivated. But God, in the name of Jesus, heighten my discernment increase my capacity to hear and give me everything that you would have for us to build and grow not for us but for you for your glory that you may use us to help and match your kingdom and we thank you for it now use every gift both little and great because we know everything that you have given us you've given unto us for us to use for kingdom building. Hallelujah. Accept our gifts now, God. Yes. Accept our sacrifices of praise. Accept our worship. And then accept the works of our hands. Yes. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen.
I you prepared for communion. I want you to get your minds and your hearts ready for communion. Amen. The Bible declares here in 1 Corinthians, it tells us, For I have received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Verse 27 says, So then, whoever eats this bread or drinks of this cup in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For those who eat and drink without the discerning the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment on themselves. So for that reason, I want us to bow our heads and just repeat this prayer after me. Father, Father I'm a sinner, I'm a sinner who, have sinned, who have sinned and fallen short of your glory. I ask you to forgive me now of all of my unrighteousness, of both sins of omission and sins of commission. Wash me. Wash me. Purify me, purify me and cleanse me and cleanse me. Make me whole. Make me whole in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And I thank you for being a God. I thank you for being a God of another opportunity. Of another opportunity. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You do not want anyone to partake of the Lord's Supper.
took the bread, he broke it, he blessed it, he said, this is my body. As often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. Let's get together. Then he said, in the same like manner, he took the cup and he blessed it. He said, this is the blood of the new covenant. He said, as often as you drink of this cup, do it in remembrance of me. Let us drink together. as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup do this in remembrance of me and the Bible declared that there was a loud room and the now noise in the upper room a noise of celebration let's begin to celebrate God let's put our hands together and celebrate God right now Wednesday, but next Wednesday, a week from this Wednesday, we'll start our Bible study at 7 o'clock.